Hello, welcome to another video of Code Snippet. This is going to be another video inside Spring Security Playlist. We have covered many things inside Spring Security Playlist and I have got many comments about OAuth. So in this video, we are going to kick start with OAuth and we are going to understand what exactly is OAuth protocol. We will see what exactly is OAuth and the process of OAuth in this video. So let's get started without wasting any time. This is going to be a fun video. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. So let's quickly go through the agenda of this particular video. So OAuth 2 in Spring Security. So what we are going to do, we will first understand what exactly is OAuth. After that, we will see a quick example of OAuth and we will see how it actually works. After that, we will see the roles in OAuth architecture. And after that, we will see the OAuth process flow, right? Kind of a flow diagram we will see and we will try to understand how exactly it works. So let's get started with what exactly is OAuth. If we talk about the definition of OAuth, OAuth is basically an authorization framework. So it's basically used for authorization, not authentication. That allows third party application, third party application to obtain limited access to users protected resource without exposing their credentials, right? Now this might sound confusing. Let's see a quick example of that. So if you see over here, I'm using this tool, which is basically eraser, right? to show you this document that I am using or this particular canvas that I usually show. This is basically diagram and all that I use, right? Now this particular application allows me to log in by using OAuth. So if you see over here, let me just quickly log out, right? So This is basically the platform, right? Eraser. Now if I click on login, what will happen? So If you see over here, it is giving me the option to log in with Google, right? I haven't created any account in this particular eraser, right? I don't have any account there. But what I can do, I can just click on login with Google, right? Now what will happen? It will redirect me to the login page of Google. So this is sign in with Google and it is asking me to select a account. So let me just quickly select this one. And now if you see, it will directly redirect me to eraser app and I am logged in already. So if you see over here, this is basically I'm logged in. And now I can show you whatever I want. My data is basically saved over here. And there we go. We have successfully logged in without even creating an account on this particular eraser. Now what exactly is happening? Eraser is basically third party application and Google is giving limited access to users data. Here who is the user? I am the user, right? And my user data is stored inside Google, right? I'm already logged in there. I'm already authenticated inside Google. And this eraser is basically requesting the limited access to my data from Google so that it can log me in, right? It will just take my data from Google instead of me giving data directly to eraser, right? Now let's try to understand this with a diagram probably. So if you go over here, now if you see this is the user, right? So this is basically my user. Now what I did, I go to sign in page and I said I want to log in on eraser and it gave me an option of login with Google. I clicked on it and this guy redirect me to page of Google and Google said sign in with Google dude. Then I clicked on my account, right? Now here what is happening, Google is basically authenticating me. But if you see over here, I'm already logged in in this particular browser. That's why it did not ask me to put my username and password. It is already authenticated. So I clicked on my account and I got signed in inside this particular eraser. Now once I clicked on my account, what Google did, Google already have my data inside its database, right? All user information is there. Google already authenticated me once, right? I'm an authenticated user of Google. Now what Eraser will do? Eraser will just need a protected data of my user. But what Google will do? Google will not share any credentials, any password will not be shared with Eraser. Only the data, user data that is needed by Eraser will be shared. That also we need to give some permission when we do it first time, right? You might have seen a page that Eraser will get this particular data from your Google account. So we need to give the authorization. Once you give that, your eraser will get that particular data and your user information will be shared inside eraser. In this case, your third party application is basically this eraser and Google is nothing but your authorization server, right? Now you will have multiple options. You may have login with Facebook, login with GitHub account, right? There are many things, right? Google is one of them and very famous ones. So we will be looking into that one, right? Now let's go back over here. So now this particular definition will be cleared. OAuth 2 is basically authorization framework that will allow a third party application, this guy, to obtain limited access to users protected resources without exposing their credentials, right? 
so my credentials are safe inside google google is not sharing my credentials but it is sharing the only needed data in order to sign me in inside eraser right simple stuff and it is basically a protocol and the full form of this guy is basically open authorization right open authorization basically so that is basically your oauth and that is basically the example of oauth that we have seen now let's proceed and let's look into rules so now if i go over here in the oauth to spring security so this is basically spring security documentation version 6.5.1 and here you will find oauth 2 right because spring security provides support for oauth it's pretty good so if you see over here we will have some details and if you see over here we have this oauth 2 architecture framework so it will just take us to this data tracker so it is basically oauth 2 authorization framework documentation and here if you see we have multiple things what we will do we will just quickly go through the roles so in the authorization flow or in the authorization architecture there are multiple roles when i say roles roles means different entities for example client will be the one user will be the one right so in the flow we will encounter multiple users for example resource owner resource server client authorization server right so we should know the meaning of all these things now if you try to read this thing it is a bit complex stuff and all these entities are used inside the flow so this is basically the protocol flow here you have client here you have resource owner here you have authorization server and here you have resource server right but what exactly is this if you try to read this it will be a bit complex and and it will be confusing stuff so what i will do i will go over here in the canvas and i have created this particular flow diagram and we will go through this instead so side by side we will look into this thing as well and we will try to understand both of them in parallel right this is basically the flow how your oauth will work so let's get started with this so if you see at the left side over here this is basically my user so it says resource owner so first role over here that we saw is resource owner that means owner of the protected resource if you see over here in the definition we have this protected resource right limited access to users protected resource whose protected resource it is it is the users protected resource so when we say resource owner that is the user that means it is me right who is trying to log in inside application i will go inside this particular application let's say it is a spring boot application and that particular application is now called as client the client is the one who is trying to get the user data right get the user data from some third party application for example google in this case and that particular third party application is called as authorization server because that guy is going to provide the authorization data right so the next entity that we saw over here is authorization server and the next one is resource server right resource server means the server which actually have the user data that this particular spring boot application needs in this case again this is google right because the user data is stored inside google as well so there will be the cases where your authorization server and resource server will be same let me just move it over here you might not be able to see it so we have this resource server over here which is similar to authorization server this is google basically right both of them are google only but internally google may have another user information api and here they may have some user login or token service that we will see now what happened first i went to this particular application let's say in this case eraser right and what i did i clicked on sign in after that this application gave me options to login by using google right so it basically kind of sent me authorization request that dude do you want to authorize by using google then what i did i granted the permission that yes i want to authorize by using google and i clicked on google right then that is basically authorization grant so i i granted that particular authorization now once this spring boot application got this particular grant what it did it redirected me to google and google have this login mechanism right it took me to google's sign in page and what i did over there i performed a login i selected my account right if you haven't logged in already it will ask you to provide the credentials and then login so in the flow first thing authorization request was sent by the server second thing we have given the authorization grant third thing it redirected us to this particular authorization server after that fourth thing what i did i logged in by using my user number five what will happen it will ask me to grant permissions so that this spring boot application can access the data of your google 
So if you are doing it for first time, you will get a form asking your consent to grant permissions for your data so that this particular Spring Boot application can access it. Once you do that, what will happen at number six, a authentication code will be returned to this particular application that okay, dude, this particular user is authenticated. This is the authentication code returned. And by using this authentication code, what you can do, you can access the user data. Once the application receives authentication code from the authorization server, in this case, it is Google token service, let's say, what will happen in the next request, this particular application will send this authentication code to resource server, right? In this case, it will be Google's user info, right? Which is actually storing your user information. Again, let me move it so that you can see it. So your Spring Boot application will use this particular authentication code. It will send that particular authentication code to resource server, in this case, Google. And this particular resource server will send the access token by using which this particular Spring Boot application can fetch the user data from this server. So once this particular Spring Boot application have this access token, it can go ahead and hit any endpoint of this particular Google or any other service to get the respective user data. So that is basically the simple flow of your OAuth, right? It's pretty simple stuff. So let's go back over here and we have seen what exactly is OAuth. We have seen the example. We have actually tried to log in inside this particular eraser by using OAuth. After that, we have seen the roles. We have seen the flow, right? We have seen this particular process flow as well. This particular flow diagram we have seen. Now, how to implement that inside Spring Boot is a question. Now, if you see over here, Spring Boot provides this particular dependency by using which you can easily configure OAuth 2 inside your Spring Boot application, OAuth 2 client basically. And here, if you see, we have this particular OAuth 2 login. If I go inside it, you will see everything is given over here. Initial setup, how to set up redirect URI, how to configure application.yaml and how to boot your application. It is pretty simple. Everything is done by your Google, right? We don't have to do much. We just have to use that particular services inside our Spring Boot application. So it is pretty simple. And the implementation part, we are going to look into upcoming videos. And the implementation part is going to be fun again. So if you don't want to miss that, subscribe to Code Snippet right now. If you like the video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to Code Snippet. Share this video with your friends so that they also have idea about OAuth 2 inside Spring Security. So that's it for this video. See you in the next video.